Hey, it's another episode of Watchy Strap, and these aren't watch reviews, they're just quick wristwatch check of the day with um, an aftermarket strap uh, to pair it with. And today I am on the Weems, oh, it's a Weems Pilot Watch from Longines. Let's see, basically a uh, mid 90s or so um, limited edition reissue of uh, the Weems style pilot watches that. Longines, along with Omega, Movado, Zenith, and JOC used to uh, to make during World War II for the British RAF as well as uh, United States Air Force. Um, yeah, I think uh, this was circa 1995, maybe a little bit, a couple years before then. It's a pretty limited run of just a thousand pieces. Um, this is probably the truest form of um, of their of a vintage reissue. Um, yeah, it's exactly to scale, I believe. It's 33 millimeters. Yes, that's small, but that's, and it is thin too. I have to get the measurements, but I'm pretty sure it's less than 10 millimeters. Um, and it's got short lug to lug. And for that reason, uh, I think it's one of the best candidates to try a, um, a really different look. Um, I like putting it on a bun strap. And such as this is a actually not a bun strap, but it's more of a, a cuff strap, I guess. Um, it's not really a bun strap, if you know what the bun straps look like. It's not quite like this, um, but it has a similar flavor. But it's uh, more uniform across. It's like a just like a like a cuff or band that you would just wrap around your wrist. But uh, you can also attach a timekeeping device, such as a watch, on this, and. Um, because the watch overall is fairly, you know, uh, diminutive in modern terms, you know, uh, not many people have watches that are under 36, let alone 34 millimeters. Um, that's all right. I mean, I do have a Vacheron Constantine. Uh, it's a vintage dress watch. That's actually, I measured it about 33 millimeters, but that's, a, you know, very open, uh, time only. It's a simple 200 dress watch, very classic, uh, patrimony, and um, yeah, but that kind of wears larger. It almost looks more like a 34 or so because it's all dial and very little bezel and it's very thin uh, versus this um, has, uh, you know, that's what they call the second setting bezel. Uh, did you see around here? It's not for timing. It's for actually resetting um, the actual you know, starting position of the second, the top of the minute, I guess you could say, uh, for non-hacking uh, watches, which was what um, predominantly uh, around during the early, you know, years of World War II. Uh, later on, they were able to get the hacking abilities, but before then, to get time synchronization um, and, you know, get it really... Um, perfectly on the mark to the second for a non-hacking watch. This is the, the quick and easier work around it. Uh, basically, you just, like right now, the start of the minute is right where the 60 is. So if you see that and you look at the minute hand, you'll see it's perfectly aligned. So yeah, it's kind of weird to see the top of the minute and the top, you know, the zero seconds or it's kind of near the four o'clock position, but it works. Um, it doesn't matter where it is on necessarily on the dial for the second hand, uh, as long as that top of the minute lines up with the zero seconds, uh, it still works the same as your traditional, I guess, hacking uh, seconds watch. Um, so that's just a quick thing. I did a video a little, not too long ago, about how you would use and set something like this. And by no means, uh, if I didn't say it in the video, is it the official way that the military used to do that. I'm just, um, I couldn't find any documentation or video as to exactly how they perform that procedure of, of using the setting the watch uh, and the second setting bezel. But, um, you know, it, that seemed to make the most sense to me the way I did it. And I uh, just showed that as an example. Anyways, lovely mix uh, sector dial. Uh, this doesn't have the cross hairs, but still, it is divided into sectors, right? You got the outer uh, minute or seconds, uh, you know, uh, graduations, right, on the outer ring. And then next section is the 12 hours, right, in that kind of off-white cream tone. And then, uh, much like the outer ring, the center is has this brushed silver section 
actually. And all of that with a nice pair of heat blued, thermally blued hands, a leaf set here, very elegant. Uh, this does this look so good. Anyways, this is on a, I believe this is from Fluco of Germany. It's not that expensive, but it's pretty decent, um, you know, uh, quality. And you just, these pieces, these leather pieces with the screws is how you'd mount the watch to it. And they're really easy to undo and, and, and switch out. And that's how you can get different sizes for this. I mean, I had a brown one from a while back of this, of this same strap but a dark brown and I, I kind of weathered it because it looked too new and I might do it with this one too at some point just kind of rough it up and, and give it a little bit more of a kind of a worn in look but it's okay for now I think but yeah you can just swap out these you can get different size uh, you know these leather keepers or whatever these pieces here that hold onto the, the lugs through the you know where the strap would normally go through and this is of course 16 millimeters yeah that's pretty small um, but they go they have different sizes for them, uh, 18, 19, 20, maybe even up to 22. You can fit all kind of you know watch heads on there. And these holes that are, there's actually three sets. You see the last one here, there's one in the middle, and then there's one more above. So depending on the watch size, you can cut, you know, get a better fit. So this, for some reason, if the lug to lug was a little bit wider, you can maybe move one or both of the screws, depending, uh, out wider to accommodate a you know longer lug to lug to get around and secure it to this cuff. And I think overall it looks cool. I mean, um, you know, again, a watch like this um, could look kind of uh, a lot smaller than some people might be comfortable with. So to just kind of beef it out and give it a little bit more wrist presence and, uh, and all that. I think putting it on a bun strap or in this case a cuff strap um, helps to do that. It just gives a little extra bit and and just fill it out and just make it look even more interesting, I think. And it's something I wouldn't normally do with most of my other watches. One, the style of my other watches generally doesn't really go hand in hand with a bun or a cuff style strap. Um, but I think something that's vintage and kind of military-esque, um, and especially at this size, um, 33 and a stew exceeds the width of the band. It's not within it which makes it kind of look bigger. And the fact that it's not that thick too. So, you know, normally a bun strap with all the layers of leather, and even with, with this, you know, it's gonna raise the watch height, but because it's so thin already and not that big, um, it's it's still very well contained and doesn't feel like it's over overbearing or anything like that or unwieldy because, you know, it, which a, you know, a watch on a bun strap or a cuff strap strap such as this could you know easily end up being if the watch head is too big but something like this works fine and just for reference this is on my um my wrist size is about seven inches i would say when i last measured it a while ago and i don't think it's changed much it's 6.9 to be a little bit more exact but basically a seven inch wrist and um i'm trying to give a far away shot and i think it works you know um I go, this is 33, I go, I have watches almost as big as 43, and if I had still had my tunas, that you're looking at 47, maybe 48, and I think, for me, the comfort zone is usually between 39 and 40, 41, but it's, it's kind of fun to have something that's just outside of that norm, um, you know, this is, and it's also, you know, you got to, at least I have to take, I take it in the context of, you know, this is something from World War II. This is what the, the pilot's watches wore back then. You know, this is a man's watch. Well, mostly men were, I think, fighting in the airplanes uh, back then. They were the fighter pilots or the bombers and the navigators. And, uh, you know, this is what they wore. And it's, and I like the fact that this is in, Contrary to the popular belief and trend that pilot watches should be at least 40, 42 millimeters and up to be considered a true pilot's watch. I mean, these were true pilot watches. These were commissioned by the British uh, Ministry of Defense, much like the, what they did with the, 
the field watches for the what's known as the dirty dozen but this is more along the lines of the uh, for pilots instead of I guess more uh, infantry or ground-based uh, watches but you know really field watches and pilot watches they almost look the same and they can be used in much the same way uh, but anyways uh, you know they're given a brief and they uh, those five different companies I mentioned before have their own interpretations of it, yet they follow a very similar design aesthetic. And, and as long as they get meet those uh, requirements of the, the brief, um, you know, it's all good. And uh, within that, you know, those time period, I'm sure, like the Dirty Dozen watches, there probably have been several variations throughout its uh, service life during the war and maybe even afterwards, um, you know, replacement parts you know whatever was available and for whatever reason they would change up you know components and like the crown position sometimes they didn't have a second crown sometimes it was up at the two uh, eventually these watches uh, when they got the hacking seconds um, they got a little bigger and they removed the time the second sighting bezel altogether and you might see that in the very traditional um, some vintage omega and more likely you'll see it, uh, the modern, uh, I guess, uh, heritage reissues uh, from long jeans. Um, they make a pilot watches that's very much like the Omegas. Um, is it A2 or A11? I forget. The, the There's a specific model number for those type of pilot watches, which this kind of falls under as well. But anyways, that's a, a time for a different video. Um, so, yeah, what do you think? Um, yeah, I know for me, generally... Bun straps and even cuff straps like this aren't really my jam, but, um, you know, I have fun with it and I think it matches the style. I think it makes it look cool. I, I'm kind of into, also have a kind of a interest and, in, uh, you know, uh, I like things that are almost steampunk like. And when you have something on a bun or a cuff strap, especially if an old style watch attached to it, um, it, gives it a bit of that uh, steampunk flair i mean there could be definitely more to it but i think it sort of works just because it's an old style watch and a lot of steampunk stuff is like things that are either redundant or uh not necessarily redundant but maybe over engineered or something or just they they, they have a way of think making uh relatively simple devices look more technical and i think in this case um and why i like this version of the pilot watches that uh, were out during world ii at least for the allied forces is that they have this timing bezel or the second setting bezel. it's not a timing bezel it's not like a countdown or anything or a count up it's actually to synchronize and zero out the seconds and the top of the minute and all that to a known radio signal or timing signal but um yeah but just just that extra feature with the extra crown for to lock it down and everything just um, it gives me a little bit of a steampunk kind of vibe coupled with this cuff uh, strap anyways getting kind of long uh maybe not as long as my last video but there we go um thanks for watching and enjoying watches